Hello and welcome to Tal Capes, where we cover film, television, comics, and games. I'm your host, Cody Nestor. Alongside me is my co-host and uncle, Todd Hill. What's going on, guys? Today we are checking out Thundercats number two. In the aftermath of his first battle with the mutants, Lino attempts to use the sight beyond sight to ask for guidance from their lost leader, Jaga. The vision he receives instead leads the Thundercats to discover another Thundarian survivor on Third Earth. Meanwhile, Sly and his mutant band have discovered the Pyramid of Mumra, and they're about to learn firsthand how dangerous the ever-living one can be. Thundercats number two was released on March 13, 2024, published by Dynamite, written by Declan Shalvey, with art by Drew Moss. So, Todd, let's discuss Thundercats number two. Spoilers are ahead. All right. So, Todd, we previously uh, also reviewed Thundercats number one. Yes. Uh, if people want to go back and kind of check that out. Uh, but in a nutshell, what did we think about issue one? I think we thought it was uh, uh, decent to good. Uh, you know, we don't get a, lo- a whole lot of new ground here other than we kind of get a spoiler at the end, possibly a connection between Jaga and Mumra. Other than that, we're just setting up our major players, uh, you know, a story we've already know about, we've seen before. Yeah, I think issue one was more like, let's recap the 1980s television show. Right. Like, we're not really, in issue one, we didn't really venture too far away from the familiar. Yes. We establish our characters, they arrive on Third Earth, Jaga doesn't make the trip, Lino goes from uh, cub to fully grown yes. adult overnight because of his pod, and then we're kind of put into the situation of Lino needs to lead the Thundercats, but he's basically been thrown into this. He has a battle with the mutant leader, Slythe, who also kind of followed him to Third Earth. The Sword of Omens is shattered. Right. And that's kind of where we pick up here. Again, it's a lot kind of uh, just kind of sinking into that warm nostalgia bath in the issue one. Yeah. Really didn't move anything else along. Like, like I said, I think we both thought it was decent. I think your biggest uh, problem with it was the design of Tigra. Yes. Mentioned uh, quite a few times, I, w- <laughs> I would say. Uh, but yeah, thought thought it was decent. So uh, overall, just high level view. What do you think about issue two? Uh, I would think uh, right along the lines of issue one, it was uh, you know decent to good. Uh, we don't get a whole lot of meat on the bone in this uh, this particular issue. Uh, there's not a lot of action, little to none action wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do get a new character introduced. Uh, more about that here in a little bit. But you know, kind of just. Uh, more of the same, you know, modern storytelling, you know, you can't put all your apples in one basket right on issue two or one, so you're right. just kind of plodding along. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely, this issue going from more what you know, kind of establishing like that in-between period. Now we're kind of starting to move towards the story of what we're telling, which is kind of like a potential mystery connection with Mumran Jaga, right. a new Thundarian survivor. What is that MO of that person? Um, those kind of things. So we're starting to move away from like issue one, which is just to kind of get you back into the world. And now we're kind of seeing like some of the relationship dynamics and things going on outside of the, just with the Thundercats, so to speak. So let's kind of deep dive a little bit into the story here. Um, Kind of starting off, I know he's having some bad dreams. Right. He's having some bad <laughs> dreams. Uh, obviously, watching the, the Sword of Omen shatter has really kind of had an effect on him. Losing his mentor, Jaga, of course, is, is taking its toll. We see Wiley Kit and Wiley Cat bringing him uh, some soup. Yes. That immediately kind of gets spilled. <laughs> uh, he's kind of, while he's kind of talking with Wiley Kit and Wiley Cat, you see the other Thundercats, they're off. Panthro, Chitara, Tiger, they're all kind of salvaging kind of parts from like the mutant ship. Right. And then uh, we have Chitara. She ends up, while they're salvaging parts from the mutant ship, she ends up finding a female Thundarian locked up in the mutant ship's brig. You want to tell us about our new Thundarian survivor? Uh, Let me make sure I get her name right right here. It is... So, Todd, tell us about our new uh, Thundarian survivor and what uh, what's going on there. So, as you mentioned, she was a female. Her name is revealed to be Calica. Mm-hmm. Uh, she actually, uh, Chitara runs her back to the Cat Slayer. Uh, she tells Cat and Kit to get a medical bay ready. Uh, she wants to know where Lino is. Uh, all the Thundercats kind of have a little meeting around her. They're kind of questioning her, like, you know, who are you? Where did you come from? You know, what's your story? Right. She kind of gives a backstory uh, that she was like a farmer's daughter. She was just kind of tending the fields for her father. Back on Thundera, the mutants kind of came down, ended up pulling an alien abduction on her. They took her aboard the ship, ran a bunch of tests. Like, she's giving the backstory to the Thundercats as she 
tells it. Right. Well, is that everyone's kind of skeptical except for Lino, who Chitara mentions later. She says that he's fallen in love, like, yeah. instantly with Calica. So I guess she's the only other female Thundercat there besides Chitara. And I guess Chitara's probably meant to be a little older than Lino here, not so much uh, maybe a love interest to start. So he's, like, immediately Smitten by her, yes. Yeah, exactly. Why do you think you call her Calica, Todd? Uh, calico cat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Perhaps because she looks like a calico cat. Yeah, right. exactly. But yeah, everyone's skeptical of the story, especially Panthro. So we see him and Lino kind of have some words back and mm-hmm. forth with each other. He's like, you know, I'm not. He's like, you know, don't be naive, son. He's like, I am not your son. I am your lord. So like, what do you think about the dynamic between like that we're kind of setting up here between Lino and Panthro in the story? Yeah, it seems to be they're, you know, they're butting heads a lot. They're clashing, you know. Uh, you know, in a way, I kind of like it. You know, it's kind of breaking some new ground you didn't really see in, like, the old cartoon series, which is more where my you know, knowledge of this property lies. Yeah. Uh, Panther, he gets pissed off and goes and punches a tree. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you kind of get that dynamic because he kind of says, you know, he, you know, kind of is internalizing, like, you know, Jaga was meant to be Lino's mentor to kind of bring him along. They expected to have years of Lino training from Cub to Man, like years of training with Jaga, years of his mentorship, but Jaga's gone. And Panthro, he's, I guess, kind of the elder statesman here. Yeah, it kind of he, feels like Lino's kind of been dropped in his lap to kind of lead along. Right, and he's kind of responsible for him. So he's going to kind of, he's he's trying to deal with his Lino being not only his lord, but he needs also young and naive and doesn't know the ways of things. So he's, he's trying to kind of get rid of his, you know, he says he's a he's a general, not a babysitter. Right. He's kind of trying to balance the two here. And, yeah, like, I, that's something that you don't get a lot of, like, in the, you know, in the, the, the 80 series and the cartoon series is that kind of character, the, the interdynamics, the interpersonal relationships mm-hmm. of the Thundercats. So, like, some of that stuff, seeing that kind of gone into here is definitely kind of nice to see. Yeah. It definitely gives you a little bit more to, like, chew on than just, like a straight out and out action comic, which I do kind of appreciate. Like you kind of see the relationship that Jaga and, and Lino has that's kind of hinted at. Then you have the relationship between Panthro and Lino and that kind of tension that's coming there. Yeah. And it, like it's all it's all kind of really good stuff. Like it's it's the most solid part so far the of the first two issues, I yeah. would say, is the kind of little dynamics you see. Some other things that I kind of liked about the book, uh, we see a lot more of like kind of like the, what third earth looks like Mm -hmm. some creatures and stuff which we'll talk about but like you get a lot more kind of the sense of the landscape of third earth which is it's kind of nice uh to see uh we what's going back on back with mumra todd so we kind of see uh some of a sly's minions they've been kind of sent ahead since the ship their ship crashed uh Mm -hmm. i think they had orders to like find a new camp uh Mm -hmm. we see them kind of come upon uh, mumra's pyramid uh Yes. All of a sudden, they start just appearing, disappearing under the sand. Just, <laughs> I don't know where. Yeah, they're they're kind of mentioning. You know, Sly told us to go set up. You know, find a, a site that we can set up a stronghold. He's off to kind of you know tend to his wounds because you know we don't see the conclusion of that fight depicted in the book, but it's kind of stated that mutants did get run off by the Thundercats. They lost. Sly is kind of taking his his loss all on his own, and he's mm-hmm. just uh, he's out. You know, kind of sitting in the in the. Thundarian Wilderness, for some reason, ends up fighting a Cyclops octopus. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, it's fine just to kind of, I guess, reclaim his, uh, you know, his uh, masculinity for right. a, lack of a better term, even <laughs> though he's a weird frog mutant man. Uh, but, yeah, we kind of see that. And then we also see that Mumra is kind of still kind of, we're led to believe that he's still kind of communing with Jaga. Right. And he's like, oh, you know, you've presented me with this bounty of these nasty ass dead creatures to eat. Thank you so much, Jaga. Right. Like, hints at more to come of things that made Jaga have, like, you know, kind of put in place for him. Yeah. And it's like, part of me is like, is this a red herring? How's this going to turn out? I'll ask you about that kind of as we wrap up here for a minute. But uh, we kind of go back to Lino. Lino and uh, Calica kind of go back to his room and uh, he kind of shows her his barbed cat penis. <laughs> I mean, I mean the broken sword of omens. Uh, oh, okay, I'm what? sorry. Uh, not his barb cat penis. No, it was the it was the broken sword of omens. I read the wrong version, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Lino kind of tells her that that they're most likely they're both the last of their kind, and then they kind of have a little kind of heartfelt kind of hug there. But uh oh, turns out she might be a simp for Mumra. Right. And our last panel, we see her eyes kind of glowing red. Glowing red. Mumra in the background, kind of insinuating that this is also Jaga, kind of helping him in a way placing this uh, thund- 
potential Thundarian survivor here within right into the midst of the Thundercats. Um, what do you think about that angle, Ty? Where do you think play it out big picture long term? What's your best guess of where that's going? Is it just a red herring? Are we going to sow some seeds that there was some, maybe some stuff that was between Jaga and Mumra here? Does Jaga switch sides? Like, you know, is it, what, do you, what do you play it out for me here? Uh, you know, I, I think the, I think they may go the route there is some kind of connection. I don't know how it's going to play out. I, don't, right. I hope they don't turn Jaga evil. Right. That would kind of suck, but, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. And I know I remember back in the old uh, cartoon days that Mumra could actually turn into and make yourself look like other creatures. So mm. I'm, I'm kind of maybe thinking that maybe he actually is Calica. That is Mumra. Mm. Possibly. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. that's not something I considered. Yeah. I tend to believe, because most of the time it's hard to kind of imagine, like, you know, these kind of established characters, even though Jaga is kind of like a fringe Thundercat. Right. He's still with, like, the hardcore loyalist, like yourself, probably, like, <laughs> that just said you don't want to see him turn evil. It's it's hard to imagine that they will, but then, like, someone like me that's not as, not as much, you know, not as, like, as loyal to the idea, mm-hmm. I like... Turn to me, well, sure. Right. Like, I'm fine with it. Like, give me something new and, like, let's see where it's going. But I'm intrigued by it. It's like, again, the interpersonal dynamics and relationships between the Thundercats and this potential connection between Jaga and Mumra is the best things the book has going for. Right. Uh, what, do you, what about the art this time around? We kind of talked about it before. Any um, thoughts that differ this time around the art? No, I mean I, I kind of didn't really mind it as much this time. I didn't really, I didn't hate it the first time. Right. It was serviceable. I think it's still pretty serviceable for the story here. Not you know outstanding, but I think it, the artist does a good job in portraying all the characters. Yeah, uh, art, yeah. Uh, art again by Drew Moss. I think um, just like any artist, I think the more that they're drawing these characters and doing the you know designs and the work, I think. I definitely, you kind of see a little bit of subtle differences between the first book. And I felt like this one was, this issue was very much more consistent than the first issue. Um, even though there's less action, like I feel like that may have given the ability to be a little bit more consistent with things. Right. I, I didn't have a big problem or anything like, you know, we always kind of just talk about the art is, does it detract? The art here by Drew Moss has never detracted right. for me. Um, you know, it's not. Uh, you know Mount Rushmore stuff, but I'm like right. it's it's definitely serviceable mm-hmm. and and uh, works really well for so far the the, the story that you're kind of telling. Just some stuff I kind of had jotted down here. Just some th- stuff I kind of liked versus disliked about the book. Um, likes the introduction to Calica. It opens up some some yeah. nice story threads to kind of go into. Yeah, I like the slide that's just out there kind of doing his own thing. Uh, the di- there's a dynamic between Wiley Kit and Wiley Cat where they're kind of like. A little bit annoyed with Lino because he's kind of grown up and he doesn't want to play with them anymore. Yeah. But they also kind of at the same time, they're kind of understanding that he needs like kind of the support from them. So, again, just another you don't really you really never got a lot from Wiley Kit and Wiley Cat. No. So just to give them a little thread to pull on. Yeah. It's like, hey, this guy two weeks ago, he was a kid just like us and we were all playing and have a good time. And now he's like a grown up with, with problems and he's showing uh, the cat lady his barb cat penis. <laughs> <laughs> and like now he doesn't have time for now us. Now he doesn't you know? have time for us anymore. Yeah. We already mentioned the the dynamic between Panthro and Lino, another kind of big uh uh kind of plot point there that I'm enjoying. Things I didn't like about the book, I don't really have any. I don't really have any direct complaints. Yeah. Like there's nothing I would say um that I'm like, okay, I, I very much dislike that. I think this was like uh it moved the story along, but it also kind of felt a little fillerish. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm I'm interested to see where we're going. I know we're only two issues in, and I don't. Maybe I'm like having too high of expectations here, but I'm I'm wondering where we're going, like what's what kind of story we're telling a little bit. But that's why I said I think our biggest complaint about the first issue was that it should have been like instead of 24 pages, it should be like 48 pages. Like 48, yeah. Like we probably should have this these two issues should have probably been like one big book, right? And then like issue two should have been like the next progression of this. I think you would have got a lot more. I think you would have kind of wrote me in a little bit better if I kind of signed, kind of seen the uh, the ease of me back in, setting mm-hmm. the stage, and then also kind of introduce a new character, and then at the end of it is twist, is she a mum, rah, simp, or not? Gotcha. 48-page oversized edition, and then we go into issue two. I think that would have been better, but hey, what do I know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't publish comic books. I don't work for Dynamite. Right. I make no money. <laughs> um, 
Anything else of interest that you want to think about or any uh, final thoughts before we go into kind of reviews here? I got one more question for you, but any kind of final thoughts for you? Just kind of going back to your, uh, you know, comments about, you know, the Mumra Jaga dynamic, you know, as long as it's smart storytelling and it's done well, I got no problem with it. Now, if it just turns out to be something corny and cliched just for the sake of sales or just for the sake of doing it. Yeah, that would suck. <laughs> yeah, if there's some kind of, if, I agree, if there's something kind of clever and of interest here, like if it is going to be a red herring, don't pull that thread for too long because then it just becomes corny. Yeah. And if you just do it for like shock value thing, then that's different. But if you put a different spin on it and like actually build it up correctly and uh, kind of set it up the right way, I think it could be interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's our big, it's the only real, the big thread we got going right now. There's no interaction yet between the Thundercats and Mumra. Mm-hmm. Maybe, as you say, maybe Calica, maybe it is Mumra in right. some way. But I guess we'll see. Uh, my big question, though, is will, will we see, Todd? So I was going to ask you as my final question before we give you uh, your reviews here. Um any interest, if I said, well, hey, like we could cover issue three or not, or would you continue reading after this or not? I still want to kind of go ahead. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not reading a whole lot of stuff new currently. Right. So, uh, you know, I think I've got enough in these two interests that my interest has kind of peaked. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to see where we're going. So I would be down to do to issue three. Yeah, fair enough. I, I would feel the same way. I'm, I'm interested. I'll at least hang around for five or six issues. <laughs> right. I'll give you five or six before I make my final judgment. Yeah. So uh, let's go on to reviews here, Todd. So we rank comics using a scale from one to ten. Starting from one, the ranks are torture to all. Awful, three bad, four subpar, five mediocre, six decent, seven good, eight great, nine amazing, and ten masterpiece. Todd, give us your final thoughts and review score for Thundercats number two. I think issue two is a six for me. It's decent. Uh, Like I say, you know, it's not really very heavily action oriented, but, you know, at the same time, I think it gives us some time to kind of dwell with the characters more when you kind of build their interactions. Uh, We kind of get this new character introduced. Uh, She may possibly be a a mom rock drone or mom rock himself. Right. So, you know, I'm interested, but, you know, a decent issue. Yeah, there's also a big chance that that's just a bluff, and it's just... She doesn't. She's not involved with Mumra at all. It's just a True. tease. It's, uh, it's right. also like you know, it could be a big cock tease, right? Like <laughs> just a uh, cleverly uh, executed panel. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. We'll, possible. We'll see. Yeah, possible. I agree with you. I give uh, Thundercats number two a six out of ten, which ranks it as decent as well. This is um, more of the same, and that does that's not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't uh, go ab- above. Uh, the level of the first issue and it doesn't drop below. It's It's been consistent so far. I rank the first one as decent. I feel like this follows in with that. Uh, I think these issues are coming out at $5 a pop, so that's something to consider. Like I said, I'll give it five or six issues to see kind of where this arc kind of yeah. goes and if it kind of keeps my interest. And so far, it has kept my interest. So, I would recommend if you're out there, you know, if you're buying floppies or if you're buying uh, digitally, yeah. uh, it 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 wouldn't be the highest priority because I can't really can't really tell you where comics are at right now. We don't read on a, uh, a weekly basis anymore. Yeah, I couldn't tell you any of the two big twos current continue it at all. Yeah, I couldn't tell you anything. <laughs> if you don't have a big pool list and you're not fifty to hundred plus dollars in comics every week, then I would say put this on your list. Yeah. Put this on your pool list. <laughs> I think you can maybe find something of interest if you uh, had any kind of outside interest to the Thundercats or you were kind of a diehard fan of the uh, the cartoon show. Uh, so, Todd, tell everyone how they can find us and get in touch with us on social media. We are at Tal Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tal Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at TalCapesPod at gmail.com. Uh, if you enjoy the show, please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Definitely helps us out if you subscribe and like the video. Tile Capes will return. We want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye, guys. See you guys.